Hello, I'm John McLaughlin. I'm the CEO and pollster at uh, McLaughlin Associates. And I'm here on behalf of my clients, Secure America Now, and it's secureamericanow.org. And they just paid us to do some surveys that were very important right now. And we came out with the survey as of yesterday. We released the survey numbers, which probably are a lot of, it's, it's news to a lot of Americans because basically, in spite of what you're hearing in the mainstream media and from the left, President Trump's approval rating is going up, his personal rating is going up, there's optimism starting to break out in the country, his policies are working and have majority support from people, and um, he's really raising these numbers through substance. He's keeping his promises, he's, he's putting out policies that the majority of Americans support, and that's what's raising his numbers. So we're going to go through some slides, we'll go through some uh, numbers here from our surveys, and we did a thousand likely voters across the country, and the survey was taken through uh, February 15th through the 20th. We released it yesterday, and it's been written about on Breitbart, it's been written about on other sites. It's on the Secure America Now site, which is secureamericanow.org. It's also on my company site, uh, McLaughlin and Associates, uh, McLaughlinOnline.com. Uh, and let me go through some of the numbers with you. This first uh, slide here, this is the job rating for the president. Back in December, when he was a president-elect, we had him 48 approve, 41 disapprove, which is a pretty good number. People were liking what he was talking about doing as president, to which I was also a campaign pollster for the Trump campaign. And when I spoke to the president, or president-elect at the time, I told him, I said, if you keep moving that number, um, you will be able to get your policies through because public opinion is behind you. And, and when we had that conversation, I also told him, be prepared for the other side to get really nasty because they know if you get over a 50% approval rating with a Republican House and a Republican Senate, you'll get most of these policies through. So right now what's going on in the numbers, you can see he was, he was a slightly negative in January, 47, 45. Then it was tied as of February 6th. And then in spite of all the stories about they were trashing uh, the, uh, the, the, the whole thing with Flynn. Uh, the president had held a press conference. The president held a rally. And the liberal media was really trying to undermine the messages that he was getting across to the American people. He is now, in our survey, 51 approve and 44 disapprove. So this is significant progress. And if we go to the next slide, you can see here that on his job rating, it's 51-44, that's the big number. Republicans is over 90%. 21% of the Democrats actually approve, and independents 43% approve. What's really interesting in terms of uh, uh, the, the other voters, 57% of the Hispanic voters we have approve of the job he's doing, plus 27% of the African Americans. So the president is making real progress that if he keeps moving his ratings through substance, he will get more of his agenda accomplished. Next slide. This is the opinion of Donald Trump. What's significant about this is we have 50% favorable, 46 unfavorable. Last, it was February, he had a 62 unfavorable nationally. He had a 65% unfavorable in March of last year. So a lot of the surveys, they were saying, oh, he's the most unpopular president ever that was elected. He, would, he could never win because his negatives were so high. That was part of their strategy, was to keep his negatives high because Hillary Clinton, was so unpopular. She, she definitely wanted him as an opponent that she could keep his negatives high so that she thought he, she could beat him. Fortunately for Donald Trump, he was running a campaign on substance, on change, and on ideas that he was able to beat her on election day in probably the most historic upset in the history of the country where he beat not only the Republican establishment for the nomination, but he also beat the Washington establishment for, uh, uh, he, for, the, for the election. And it came as the biggest surprise for those of, of, who, like myself, who were working for President Trump, now President Trump, during the campaign, we were out there saying we thought he could win right through, the, right through uh, months ahead of time. And then on, on the weekend, the Friday before, I was on Hannity Radio saying the president was, uh, that Donald Trump would win the election. On election day, we were saying that the exit polls were wrong, the models were wrong, that President Trump would win. And uh, Donald Trump did win. And when you look at here, 50% fair, 46 unfair. This is the first time in our tracking of his favorable, unfavorable, his popular ratings for the last year, 
he has broken into positive territory. So if this, if this momentum continues, he will be able to get his policies passed. Let's go to the next slide. The direction of the United States. When you look at this long chart, it has not been, this has been negative. Two-thirds of the American public was saying that we're in the wrong direction. The wrong, there was a, a target during the Trump campaign where we actually targeted voters who said the country was on the wrong track versus right direction. And if they weren't voting for Trump, we were trying to figure out how to get them to vote for Trump. So they were our target. If you were a wrong track voter, wasn't voting for Hillary Clinton, we were trying to get you. And that's how Donald Trump went to win the race. And what's important is all, all during 2014, 2015, 2016, two-thirds of the American voters said the country was on the wrong track. Well, guess what? In December, it was 62%. In January, it was 55%. Now it's 48%. So it's come down since January. You've had a net increase of 27% because the right direction is going up 28, 35, 41. So you now have more Americans than probably since Barack Obama got reelected in 2012 saying that the country's headed in the right direction. So you have 41% right direction. You have 48 wrong track. So there's more optimism going on inside uh, uh, the electorate just within the last month since Donald Trump's been sworn in. People are liking what they're seeing, and they're saying four to ten Americans are now saying the country's headed in the right direction. The uh, wrong track numbers dropped under 50 for probably the first time in four years. So optimism is breaking out, and it's because of Donald Trump's policies. Let's go to the next slide. Generally speaking, would you like President Trump and Congress to continue the policies of Barack Obama or change and move away from the policies of President Obama? Forty percent of all voters right now say continue. And they're mostly Democrats. 51% say change direction. The majority of Americans, five to four, want Donald Trump and Congress to take the country in a different direction. In spite of all the fanfare the media gave President Obama when he was leaving office and talking about whatever they wanted to talk about with his, with his policies, the majority of Americans want to change direction. And that's actually how Donald Trump in his campaign won the election. Because we were targeting voters who weren't cha want to change but didn't want to, but didn't want to, uh, but weren't voting for Hillary Clinton. We were bringing them in to vote for us. So right now, this change message, which Donald Trump is keeping his promises, he's getting things done on security, he's getting things done to improve the economy. If he keeps his promises and keeps the country moving forward, his ratings will go up and th these numbers will continue. Next slide. Related to policies. How important were national security issues in deciding your vote for president of Congress? 88% important, 59% very important. This was as of February 6th of this, year, of this month, February 6th. This was the number. You have eight and nine Americans saying, saying that uh, national security issues were important in deciding their vote, and six out of ten saying it's very important. Secure America Now has been pushing these issues. Uh, Without a doubt, it's had a tremendous impact because people absolutely were deciding to vote on this. And it's that virtually every voter out there is paying attention to security issues right now. Let's go to the next slide. This is on a specific issue we asked, do you approve or disapprove of President Trump's executive order to stop immigration for 90 days from the following failed Middle Eastern countries, Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen? so we can increase our security checks of these refugees. Very straightforward question, very straightforward answer. A thousand people were asked in the February 6th survey, 57% approve of that, 37 disapprove. So you're seeing different wordings from this, from the media, different places. They will phrase it as a Muslim ban. If you read the executive order, nowhere does it mention the word Islam or Muslim. The, the executive order is pretty straightforward, it just says, from, from these seven countries, and uh, uh, you know they're stopping immigration to increase security checks, and there probably is going to be a new immigration order coming out pretty soon that just polishes it up and makes sure it's completely uh, done properly. But 57 to 37 is a big number. And if you're a Trump voter, you supported it 90 to 7, you approved of it. And if you're a Clinton voter, you 29% actually approved of this. So it has majority support. There's Democrats that support it. There's independents support it. The majority of independents support it. And certainly Trump's base, the Republicans, give it very, very strong support. Next slide. 
Do you approve or disapprove of President Trump's executive order to end catch and release and make the deportation of illegal immigrants who are criminals a top priority? This is again in that February 6th survey. 69% of all voters approve. Only 21% disapprove. Hispanics, 56 to 31, they approve. In this national survey on February 6th, you have 7 in 10 Americans approving the deportation of criminal illegal aliens. Let's go to the next slide. Do you support or oppose cutting off federal grants to cities that break the law by refusing to turn in criminal illegal aliens? 59% to 29% among all voters, they support this policy. Again, it was done February 6th for Secure America Now. And when you look at the, the Republicans absolutely support with 86%, Democrats 37%, Independents 55 Hispanics 46 to 43 the plurality of Hispanics actually support this policy. And they're basically saying, we're going to cut off these cities if they don't turn in the criminal illegal aliens. So they know there's a spending issue involved here. Uh, that's significant, but the majority of Americans, two to one, support this. Let's go to the next slide. If you knew that Iran is violating the nuclear deal by continuing to develop intercontinental nuclear weapons, increasing its stockpile of nuclear fuels, and supporting its military expansion throughout the Middle East, with billions gotten from the nuclear deal, would you support ending the nuclear deal with Iran? 69 to 9, they support this. Overwhelming support. And uh, it's across the board, with Democrats 56%, Republicans it's 85%. So the idea that Iran is it, it's, uh, you know, basically using our money that we've given them to violate uh, uh, the agreement and increase their nuclear fuels and they're developing these missiles and Again, when we took the survey on February 6th, it was after there was news about Iran uh, shooting off intercontinental ballistic missiles. So the majority of Americans support basically what their support is ending the nuclear deal with Iran because they know that they're violating it. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Do you approve or disapprove of billionaire George Soros financing the left-wing organizations to pay people to protest against President Trump and the left often using violent demonstrations on college campuses and in cities to stop pro-Trump conservatives from speaking in public. We've all seen the news stories about these paid protests and the fact that some of them are being paid and they were organized, etc. And the fact that there's been these protests to stop conservatives from speaking on college campuses. 70% disapprove of this with the left. So basically what I said in the beginning, in spite of all these protests, President Trump's ratings are going up, the majority, and this is the reason why. The majority of Americans, when they're told about this, they disapprove of this. They're seeing it in the news. They disapprove of the fact that these protests are going on. So 70 to 20, they oppose. And, and uh, uh, as far as the it's, it's Trump voters, virtually over 90% disapprove of this. The majority of Democrats and Clinton voters disapprove as well. And again, all these results are on the Secure America Now website where you could go to secureamericanow.org and you, they're also on our company's website mclaughlinonline.com so any numbers I cite here you could go check you can actually go to those websites and there's plenty of data from this survey and the February 6th survey that these numbers are online and the exact wording of the questions as well uh, let's go to the next slide do you approve or disapprove of protests by the left and Democrats to stop the deportation of illegal aliens who have been convicted of serious crimes in the United States to allow them to remain free in the United States. 62 to 32, they disapprove of these protests. So once again, on the specific issue of deporting illegal aliens who have been convicted of serious crimes, those protests that you're seeing in the news, the majority of Americans actually oppose those protests, and they're backfiring. Because as they backfire, as President Trump has put these policies in place, as the protests happen, the majority of Americans are saying, we actually support the president, we disapprove of these protests. So the protests that the left has been organizing and running over the past week has probably enabled the president, through his press conference, through his rally uh, in Florida, enabled him, given him a platform, more attention, that he can muster political support for his, his policies and programs and improve his job rating and improve his personal favorable rating. So. Uh, once again, that's a big number, and in terms of politics, when you look at it, all voters, and this was done as of, uh, uh, this is the one that we released yesterday, 62% actually disapprove of these protests. So, with that, I think we've hit the end of our slides, right? That's the end of our slides, so we're going to take questions, right? My friend Adam here is helping me. Yes? 
absolutely. Let's go ahead and start with some questions then. <clears throat> so the first question is uh, from Sarah, and she wants to know, from your poll, can you tell which national security issue do people tend to care most about? They, the, the ones they care most about, and again, you could go back to the February 6th survey, that you could go back to the February 6th survey that Secure America now put up on their website, and we've got on our website. They had a series of issues, 11 issues, where you ranked on a scale of 0 to 10, uh, which was most important to you as far as security goes. And the number one thing was preventing attacks in the homeland. So protect, preventing terrorist attacks in the homeland was the number one issue. Uh, defeating ISIS was up there. And by the way, seven out of the 11 issues we tested all school, scored eight or higher on a scale of zero to 10. So uh, without a doubt, terrorism, stopping terrorism in the United States, defeating ISIS was the next most important. We also had issues uh, about cybersecurity was there, scoring uh, uh, more than eight, and supporting local police was important. But all 11 issues we tested scored seven or higher. So when you think of the uh, when you think of these security issues, they're not only broadly important to the American voter because all these surveys are done of likely voters. They're not only broadly popular; they're also numerous in scope because it's not just the immigration issues, it's not just securing the border, it's not just uh, stopping and preventing terrorism. There's 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 also issues that where supporting local police was really important to them in terms of security. Uh, the idea of stopping uh, cyber attacks in the United States, that was very important to them. Uh, without a doubt, uh, stopping Iran from getting a nuclear missile and stopping North Korea from getting nuclear missiles, uh, those were very important to them. They were on the scale as well. So, next question. Yeah. Yeah. John wants to know, um, do your polls imply or show um, what, what policy decision or policy is Donald Trump doing that's causing his approval rating to increase the most? It's mostly security issues right now. Uh, voters, almost half the voters in the survey said economic issues were most important to them, but at 4 in 10 were saying security issues. On the 4 in 10 that cited security issues, Donald Trump had over 60 percent approval rating, which makes sense as president because of the Constitution and the laws. The things that he's been doing to improve security at home and abroad he has the presidential power to do that. The economic issues, although he's certainly been out there talking to companies and corporations about keeping jobs in the United States, I think, I think there's going to be a leg because you have to wait and see what he proposes in his tax policies and when the economy actually starts growing. Because for four years we've had an economy that's been flat as a pancake with 1% or 2% growth is best. When, and for a country that's used to, usually we have our economy growing at 3 4, 4% GDP every year. So the security issues right now are drive. those are the most important policies that are driving his ratings up. And hopefully uh, as his economic program gets out there, we will see his numbers go even higher from this 51% approved and 50% favorable. We'll see those go higher, uh, close, maybe Reagan-like, where I think his numbers are really going to be like Ronald Reagan's numbers where... When Ronald Reagan was not popular when he was first elected president, for those of us old enough to remember. He was one-to-one. -one. He was a polarizing president. And during the first two years of his presidency, the economy was flat, and unemployment was 10%. And that's why Republicans lost 26 House seats in the midterms. So uh, uh, if President Trump is able to get support for his growth pro programs that matches the support for his security programs, uh, I think you'll see his ratings go even higher where he could get into the mid-50s uh, in approval rating and favorable rating and get closer to 60% because the people really do, as you saw from some of these numbers, he's getting high 50s, over 60%, even 70% support for his policies. So the substance, once people clear through all the clutter of uh, the media hype and distraction about different issues, when you look at the substance of his policies, he has majority support. So your polls then suggest that there's a real disconnect between the American people and the national media. Absolutely. In fact, in December, when Secure America now asked uh, a questionnaire on a monthly omnibus survey, they asked, uh, do you, do you uh, think the media is biased against President Donald Trump, President-elect Trump? 53 to 34. 
they agreed that the media was biased against President Trump. That's a huge number. When 53% of all Americans think that, think that the media, which is supposed to be fair and unbiased and protected by the First Amendment, which it is, they, the media is supposed to be an impartial uh, source of information. And 53% of all Americans said they were biased against Donald Trump. 34% said no, which is a really low number. And probably since then, it's, uh, it's probably gotten higher. Because, I mean, last week when President Trump held the press conference at the White House where he called the media to task, and he was there for, it was about an hour, and he took a number of questions. And there, there were obviously, uh, there, there were questions from across the board from the media. We'd never seen anything like this with uh, President Obama over the last eight years. President Trump basically went out there, held a tour de force, answered any question, and ones he didn't want to answer, he basically told them why, and he, and he called them out on where they were wrong. And to the news of that, I think, as it went through, I was fortunate to be basically doing the survey after he did his press conference and while the news story was out there about him going to do the rally in Melbourne, Florida. So those, those events, I think, showed that the president is able to use his bully, bully puppet to get support for uh, his policies. And uh, even though the media, when he did the rally on Saturday, the media was focused on something he said about Sweden, well, the fact of the matter is the story's answer was the president was right. Sweden's had a problem where the refugees coming in have caused a lot of crime, particularly rape, and the statistics are through the roof that they've had a real problem. And uh, the president was justified, but the media doesn't apologize. And the American people are seeing the bias. And they understand that the bias hurts us. Where the media doesn't tell us the truth, they don't tell us things about the mainstream media. There are some good ones, but the mainstream media doesn't tell us the truth. They keep information from us that we need to know. But the, through the internet, through Facebook, through Twitter, through email from your friends, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, people are getting the messages and, they, and they're finding out what the truth is. And, and when they see it, the president's numbers are going up and support for his policies is going up. Thanks, John. Uh, Rachel asks, based, on, based off of your polls, what would you say is the most popular national security policy that President Trump has enacted thus far? So far, I, ironically, I, mean, I think the most popular is deporting uh, criminal illegal aliens right now. And I thought during the campaign, as we were, we were going through the Trump campaign, as he would bring that up, people around the country would go to his rallies, would respond. They knew of cases in their communities throughout the country where you had somebody who was an illegal alien who was committing serious crimes, whether it was robbery, whether it was identity theft, whether it was even serious rape, murder cases. People across America know of instances in their community where somebody they knew or some, something happened where somebody that had been apprehended before and let go or even deported before and came back into the United States. So you've got 70, 7, 10 Americans supporting his policies to deport criminal illegal, illegal aliens. After that, I would say his next one is taking the fight to ISIS, because basically they're launching uh, terror attacks from around the world uh, where they have, there's been, and, and this, is, this is another thing that Secure American has also emphasizes. It's not just the ones that we know about where they were ISIS-inspired or you had these lone wolves. It's also the fact that there's been plots that have been thwarted that we really don't know about. That they will tell you, like, if you talk to members of Congress, I work for 20 members of Congress, uh, sitting members of Congress, and one of them is Pete King. Pete King's on Homeland Security, and he will tell you that there's numerous cases where they have stopped uh, because of vigilance, because of security uh, uh, procedures. They have stopped attempts on the homeland that ISIS and other groups wanted to start. And, and the president's, ultimately, that's why he had 57% of the people approving of his executive order to stop immigration from seven countries that you don't have any information on. I mean, when you, when you look into these issues to write a question on it to, for a poll, you find out, well, how did they vet them? And there's like, there's no database in Syria to get information about whether somebody's a terrorist or a bad guy or who they know. That doesn't exist. So the president's saying, let's take a pause. Let's do it for 90 days. Let's see what we can do to increase security. And the majority of Americans are saying, in spite of the hype, in spite of the mischaracterization and basically uh, 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 disinformation from a lot of the mainstream media, the majority of Americans support that policy 57-37. Judy Kavanaugh asked, what can the ordinary person do to find out the truth? 
Well, you keep going to secureamericannow.org. Go to their website. Go to their Facebook page. Um, I'm sure everything that they put up is vetted. It's true. It's factual. Um, and if it wasn't, the left would have already held us accountable for it. But that's the best thing right, right off the bat. And by the way, when you think about the president, he has over 20 million people following his Twitter account. He has over 20 million likes and friends on his Facebook page. So if you want to hear directly from the president or see some facts, go right to his pages. Go to secureamericanow.org. Go, uh, go to these other pages. Um, and I, I, what I find ironically is when we are, whenever we ask in, in the uh, uh, polls, we'll ask, what's the best source of information for you? And they'll tell us different media outlets and Fox News will rank highly and some of the others ones will come close. But then you say, what about your friends and neighbors? And friends and neighbors goes well up beyond uh, all these established media sources. And that's where you really do communicate and you have a dialogue with your friends and neighbors who actually pay attention to uh, these types of issues. So uh, I, I would say what you're doing right now, where you're on Facebook, where you're on the Internet and you're looking for the facts, go to reliable sites like secureamericanow.org and uh, uh, go find the facts there. Robert wants to know if there was a specific result in this poll that was completely unexpected or unusual to you that you were you just were like wow that what happened here? Well, I was because over the past week, think about all the negative coverage came out of the mainstream media against the president, and people often ask me, well, do you work for Donald Trump and he won the election? How'd you feel on election night? And were you happy? And I say, often say, no, I was relieved. Uh, because it was a close race and I felt good about it. When we were taking this survey this week, uh, as we were conducting the survey, I'm seeing all these negative stories about the president, about his executive order, about uh, uh, the stuff with uh, General Flynn, about, oh, they're in chaos, they're in disarray. I get the survey back, and his job rating's up, his favorable rating's up. The right direction is moving in the right direction for the country. The wrong track is coming down. So the voters are drawing their own conclusions. And, and so overall, to see his policies are popular, particularly on security, and security is driving his, what, his policies on security are driving his favorable ratings up, it's up, driving his job approval up. The pleasant surprise was that, in spite of all the negative media coverage, that was getting through. And in the survey, you know, when you, if, you really, if you're a real junkie in terms of statistics, and you go to our website, and we have, we have the crosstabs posted there. And you'll see that you have 80% of the voters on Facebook. You have 4 in 10 voters following Twitter. I mean, people are getting information for themselves. So in spite of what happened in the in mainstream media, where these network news, where the, at 6 o'clock when people watch the evening news, the average age is well over 60 years old. Most Americans are not getting their information from the networks. They're getting it uh, off the internet. They're getting it from their friends and, and family, and uh, it's it, it's getting through in spite of the negative media coverage. So the most the most surprising fact here was, in spite of all the negative coverage over the last week, in spite of the inside the Beltway stuff in Washington saying it's chaos and disarray, the American people are supporting the president's policies, and his ratings are going up. So that was the most surprising number. Okay. Is there a certain country that Americans are most worried about that they're afraid will impact their security the most? That's a really good question because we asked in the February 6th survey, we asked uh, which of the following countries or what country is uh, the greatest threat to the United States. And, the, and, and there were numerous countries mentioned, uh, but right off the top it was Iran, Russia, and China. And North Korea wasn't far behind. And actually, since we did the survey before February 6th, North Korea launched the missile after February 6th. So they were trying to move up there. They probably saw the poll and wanted to move up their ratings. But it was, it, was Russia, it was Iran, Russia, and China. And the interesting part was Republicans and independents say that Iran is the biggest threat. And Republicans, it's like 40-20, they say Iran is the biggest threat. Democrats thought it was Russia, and it was almost in that 40-20 split as well. So the Democrats are paying attention to these stories about Russia and, you know, the sore loser stories that are coming out of the, the Clinton camp. Uh, but most Americans realize it's, it's Iran. And when you look, when you specifically ask about, as again, I said in that February 6th survey, you can look in, at the results on our website, on the Secure America Now website. When you look at the top issues, they seriously want to stop 
North Korea from getting nuclear missiles, stop their nuclear uh, program, and they want to stop Iran's nuclear program because they realize what a threat that is. And, and they want to stop Iran from just spreading terrorism around the Middle East. So those, those are the biggest. Clark asks, how have you seen the polling numbers change in the last few weeks? The polling, uh, the polling numbers, uh, that's, that's another good question because this electorate that we're looking at is more Democrat than Republican. Slightly more Democrat. It's modeled after the we do when we put together our sample and we put together our sc screener questions. We do it based on last November's election. So when we look at that and then we screen twice for how likely they are to vote. So this is a likely voter sample. Um, it's a more Democrat sample than Republican. Uh, the February six numbers you had more Clinton voters than Trump voters. So the electorate I think is pretty stable. It's not really shifting right now. But their public opinion about policies for the president are shifting and are more supportive than I think you'll see in the mainstream media. Like, for example, there was a Quinnipiac put out a poll yesterday. And Quinnipiac had very different numbers, very different results. And the first thing I do is I go check the demographics, and it had only 25% Republicans. Well, on election day, we had 33. So I don't know why Republicans would have left the United States since the election, but they really haven't. And you just, you haven't. And they also poll adults, and they do this random digit dial. So what you have is um, the electorate is really staying about the same. It's pretty stable right now. And a lot of people were thinking it was going to be like 2012 when Barack Obama got uh, reelected, but it wasn't. It was a different election last November because Hillary Clinton wasn't Barack Obama. Uh, but the electorate's about the same. The issues are moving in the direction of President Trump, and his ratings are following them. As he keeps his promises and puts his policies forward that he said during the campaign where he was going to secure the borders, he was going to uh, stop terrorists from coming into the country, he was going to go after ISIS, come up with a plan to destroy ISIS, um, the idea he was going to uh, uh, definitely go after China in some respects and, and, and hold Iran to account about what they're doing, the violations with the nuclear deal. As he's putting those policies in place, his ratings are going up. And the American people are supporting him. So what you're seeing is not so much the polls change as much as the, the support for the president and, and what he's doing. Those are going up. Well, we have time for just a few more questions. Um, this is from Ken Wise. Ken Wise asks, who determines what is fake news? What <laughs> criteria are used for the determination? I'm just curious. Uh, you do. Ken, it's, it's your determination what's fake and what's not. And uh, because right now there is no... This is like playing a football game without referees. Uh, the media that is supposed to be the unbiased, impartial referee is extremely biased, and the vast majority of Americans know it. Even on Election Day, when we did our post-election survey, when we asked people, did the, did the media favor Hillary Clinton or did they favor Donald Trump, 45 to 17, they said they favored Hillary Clinton. So people, as they were going on Election Day, knew that the whole campaign, uh, the media was biased in favor of Hillary Clinton against Donald Trump, and it, it's gotten worse since then. As I mentioned, that December surveys for Secure America Now, they said 53%. They're biased against Donald Trump. My guess is it's going up even higher. So who determines what fake news is? The really scary part is they realize that you're getting information, like, well, like right now, on Facebook, that the mainstream media won't cover. I know for a fact that most, most media outlets, where we put this number out, and it was there, the, all these numbers I just showed, it was out there, the mainstream media won't carry. And they think of things, well, well he used to work for Trump, or uh, uh, they'll say things like, uh, it was done online, well, 90% of America's online. But um, they don't want to cover it because they don't like it. They don't like the, 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 the unbiased uh, way the questions were asked. They don't like the fact that the results came out the way they did. So they don't cover it. So what happens is, you then have to go find the news. So you're the one who figures out what fake news is. You're the one who figures out what what's factual. So uh, um, the internet and this and again, I said the scary part is they're talking about limiting what's going on on the internet. Big companies, whether it's Facebook or Google or something like that, you're seeing them censor individual citizens. Who you now, granted, they do have kooks that they need to keep off the internet, particularly ISIS when they put out videos. They'll carry that crap. But then, but then uh, uh, when individual citizens say something where it might be religious, where they say something, quote from the Bible or something like that, they might uh, take that person off their, off their Facebook page or something. And uh, 
that's that's scary. When they start censoring news on the internet, uh, whether it's on Facebook or some other social media, that that's a problem. So you should speak out against that. All right, last question. This is from Joe Durham. Uh, Joe heard that you said that North Korea, Iran, China, and Russia are some of the countries that the that Americans are most afraid of and nervous about as national security threats. And Joe wants to know why China and Russia are lower on the list. Why aren't they at the very top? First is Iran. Uh, <laughs> China and Russia. No, they're there. They're there. You have them. I mean, we asked if you go back, if you go on the Secure, Secure American Now website or their, or their Facebook page, or you go on my company's uh, uh, website page, McLaughlinOnline.com, go to the February 6th survey, where we released it, I think, a couple days after, I might say February 13th or something like that. In the PowerPoint presentation, there are slides where we asked them off the top of their head what country is the most serious threat, and we asked them first choice, and then we asked, okay, what's your second choice? And Iran's up there, and when you think about the, these rogue nations, they can, you know, Iran's out there spreading <coughs> terrorism, shooting off uh, ICBMs, violating a nuclear agreement. Then, you know, there's a lot of good reasons to think Iran's the biggest threat. And as far as Russia goes, invading Crimea, uh, going to war with the Ukrainians, um, you know, tr trying to, you know, what they're doing in Syria, bombing Aleppo, et cetera, like that. Uh, bombing uh, people that were fighting against Assad and condoning what Assad was doing. There's a pretty good case for Russia. And then China, you know, yesterday, this wouldn't be captured in this survey, but they certainly know that. They're, they're uh, putting missiles in buildings, or they, no, I take it back, the missiles aren't there yet, but they're buildings on islands they're building in the South China Sea. So it's not a safe world anymore, and most Americans know it, and those countries are building resumes that the average American who's sitting at home is seeing these countries as a threat to the United States. And uh, they're seeing multiple countries. And uh, like I said, after we took that survey, North Korea launched a couple missiles. And it was while the Prime Minister of Japan was over visiting our president. So, uh, um, it's, so these issues are really important. And your ability to actually pay attention to these issues, care about them, go out there and translate mm -hmm. that uh, care and concern about security issues into political action that the world will be a safer place and your support for a secure America now and what they're doing is really important. So, uh, so uh, uh, unfortunately the list is not short, the list is a number of countries and it appears that they're competing to be our most dangerous enemy which is scary. So. Thanks a lot, John. I know the Secure America Now viewers appreciate your time and, and your polling, so um, that, that concludes the live poll. Great job, Adam. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.